What is the best longest iron of 2018? Let's find out and let's do it now. Sounds phenomenal. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like course logs, if you like club reviews, if you like club comparisons, just like this one, the Ping I 500 against the TaylorMade P790, against the Mizuno JPX 919 forged, against the Titleist 718 AP3 iron. That was a mouthful. But maybe you just like completely and utterly free golf tips to help you with your game, smash your handicap down and improve your overall enjoyment. If that's the case, make sure you hit that subscribe button and put the thumbs up to let me know you're enjoying it. Now let's get back to the video. I've got an extra special treat for you today. I've got four of the best irons on the market. I'm gonna put them head to head on the launch monitor with premium range balls and see which one comes out on top. Now I have done reviews on most of these irons. The only one I haven't touched yet is the Mizuno JPX 919 forged. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking you through that. I will touch base with all the clubs though. Let's start with the Mizuno. Now I have done an on-course test of the Mizuno JPX 919 Tor iron and that felt like absolute butter. It was gorgeous. But what about its bigger brother? The Mizuno JPX 919 forged iron. It still looks phenomenal. It looks absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, if we look at a close-up now, it does look very similar to its little brother, the JPX. I'm going to stop saying that. It does look very similar to its younger brother, the Tor model. However, we've got a lot more forgiveness. We've got a much thicker sole, a bit more perimeter weight in, so you're going to have a lot more forgiveness. Not to mention the loft is stronger as well at 32 degrees loft for the standard 7 iron. Mizuno have put a larger area of minimum face thickness for higher ball speeds no matter where you hit it on the face. And we also have a deeper CG in the long irons to help you launch the ball higher, longer and land softer. Because who doesn't want that with long irons, right? I am very much looking forward to hitting this beauty on the range. But let's not forget the guy that started it all, the TaylorMade P790. This guy's having a birthday this week, 29th of November last year was when the P790 was released and it kind of took the world by storm a little bit, or it took me by storm. If you've ever hit one of these, you'll know exactly what I mean. It comes off like an absolute rocket. We have the speed foam in the face, we have the slot on the bottom for more ball speed. We have the thin forged 1.75 millimeter face, offering again more ball speed, precision CG placement and much higher MOI, again for forgiveness and longer shots. This seven iron coming in at a loft of 30.5 degrees. Now Titleist have made great irons for a very long time. And this year they introduced something which we've not seen before, the AP3. A little bit of a blend between the AP1 and the AP2. A lot of people found the AP1s were very forgiving, they went a long way, but they were just big and maybe a little bit uncouth. There's a word. A lot of people struggled to get on with the AP2. They found them a little bit small, a little bit slender and too blade-like. I've never got that to be fair. I think AP2s are a fantastic club and they're very nice and very forgiving. With its player's preferred shape, hollow design and l shape inserts, this is again designed for, I'm going to keep saying this, high ball flights, ball speed and overall distance with shot stopping capabilities. Let's talk Ping i500. I've just been fitted for a set of these bad boys down at Gainsborough and I loved them, really enjoyed hitting them. The forged face, the hollow head, it just all felt fantastic. Not to mention they went miles as well. For me, it is the aesthetics of these that I just think is absolutely fantastic. Just like the P790, it's got that kind of blade look to it, but let's not rule out the other three in this contest. The AP3, the Mizuno Forged, and the P790 all look fantastic as well. This is gonna be one hell of a battle. The standard loft for the eye blade is 30.5 degrees. However, you can get it in the power spec where the seven iron would be 29 degrees or the retro spec where the seven iron would weigh in at 32.5 degrees. I think we've done enough talking, do you? Let's go on the range and let's do it now. Now, one thing I try my best not to do when I'm reviewing clubs is wear a certain cap. I like to remain completely honest and unbiased. That being said today, I've got four different caps. Let's do it. 
tiny bit of a pull for the first shot of the day. Not terrible numbers, 164 total. Let's hit some more and get loose. And no, I'm not taking the labels off either. Looking down at the Mizuno, it just looks gorgeous. That sounds phenomenal. Another pull, but that sound. Yeesh! Oh wow, that felt good. All the swings I'm putting on these, the numbers are very, very consistent. I'm getting 164 yards spat at me a lot here. And I'm well aware that this cap doesn't suit the shape of my head. Let's hit a couple more and change it up. Visually, the top line is a tiny bit thicker than what I would usually like to see. But it's not bad for the iron that it is. It's not the tall version, is it? Oh, that felt so good. And that's gone miles. I don't know if you can hear this sound. Can you hear it? I'm going to replay it now. I've not hit anything that sounds this good. Oh. If the Mizuno guys are watching, feel free to send a set of these with Project X6's one degree flat lie angle to Huddersfield Golf Club before my Scotland trip next week. These are good. Okay, that's six shots hit with the Mizuno JPX 919 forged. Let's take a look at those numbers. So looking at the numbers for the Mizuno JPX 919 Forge, wow, that is a mouthful, isn't it? 155.9 average carry, 165 average total. Not bad numbers at all. Take a look at the spin rate, 5,500. That is low for a 7iron, but it's not really low in relation to what kind of club it is. This is a power spec club, isn't it? It's not a blade. It's not something which I'm expecting to shape massively well. I did pull the first couple of shots and to be honest, I didn't really find it that forgiving dispersion wise. The last few I hit really, really well. They were nice, beautiful high fades and that's exactly what I'd be looking for. Now the Mizuno clubs were lovely, but the cap left a little bit to be desired, didn't it? Let's do it. Good hit, just left. Now looking down at this, I have used tightly signs for quite a while now, but nothing this big. I've used the MBs, the blades. Tightlist have, look at the size of this hat. Tightlist have done such a great job in making this AP3 look like a player's iron. And that shows on tour because there are PGA Tour and European Tour players gaming these golf clubs. Oh, what a beautiful golf shot. Now these don't sound or feel anywhere near as nice as the Mizuno Forge that I've just hit. I suppose going from that to this, it's always going to be a big difference. But the numbers are still stacking up pretty well. Are there any bad golf clubs on the market this year? Definitely caught that last one a little bit heavy, but seemed to get away with it with the numbers. Forgiveness factor, pretty good. Oh, wow. That last one got me coming over all emotional. That was a beautiful shot. Time clearly flying when you're having fun. I can't believe I've hit six shots with that AP3 already. Let's check out those numbers. So numbers with the title is 718 AP3, average carry distance 154.5. That's a yard down from the Mizuno. Total distance 163.9, again, a yard down on the Mizuno. Spin rates, pretty much exactly the same within like 30 revs per minute and we're not going to pick straws at that these are obviously two very similar golf clubs the one thing that i can define with that is the feel the mizuno felt absolutely fantastic the titleist felt that a little bit harder i think it's time to go p790 isn't it that's another cap that just doesn't suit my head does it let's do it The one that started it all. Still good looking, isn't she? Happy birthday, by the way. So this is our demo iron P790. 
And the only way I can tell you how good it is and how popular it's been is that the grip is absolutely worn out. That many people have tried the P790 iron. This by far feels the easiest to hit so far. I didn't feel like I struck those bang out the middle and the numbers are way, 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 way up there. Oh, I got that one though. That's gonna be massive. And it wasn't, it wasn't any further. In fact, it was less far, if that's, in fact, it didn't go as far as some of the toey shots that I've just hit. That's the thing with the P790, and that's the thing that you may have caught in my early reviews of this club. The consistency level of the distances, I, I just don't get it. That's just insane. Oh, that's a golf shot. That's the one I've been looking for. Absolutely bang out the screws, 174 yards, smashed it. But if the flag's at 165, which I will be playing for a 7 iron, is there much point in that? Let's hit one more. That's another good one. It's just so high and powerful. And that's the one that I'm talking about. That's the last shot of the day. And before I talk you through the average numbers, take a look at this. 179 yard total, 170 yard carry. The spin drops right down to near 5,000 and that's just going, to be honest, that could be going out of bounds long. And I know it's lovely to hit irons a long way, but that's a little bit silly. And I didn't get that with the other clubs either. Let's take a look at all the numbers. Okay, average numbers for the tailor-made P790 iron. Average carry 160.7, that's five yards up on both of the previous clubs. Average total distance 169.5, again, that's massively up on both the clubs. That's up by five or six yards. However, you have got to think what those last two shots have as an effect on the average of the total shots. Spin rate, again, five and a half thousand. These are all very consistent, aren't they? These irons are performing pretty similar. The respected technology in the heads is obviously performing very similarly, as you can see in the numbers. Try saying similarly quickly in a sentence when you're filming a video and it's about to rain. Let's take a look at the last contender. The Ping, oh God, this is a small hat. The Ping i500, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I did get fitted for a set of these the other week at Ping. I'm still waiting for those to turn up. Come on guys, the golf trip is next week. I need to get these in the bag. But actually, do I? Let's see how these perform compared to the other three. What am I looking for? What makes it a winner? Would it be consistency? Would it be the longest one? Would it be feel? Comment below, what would you be looking for? Pressure's on now. First shot with the fitted Ping i500. Well, not the fitted i500, but you know what I mean. Feels great. Feels really good. Oh, wow. Wow. That one felt gorgeous, looked gorgeous, was absolutely gorgeous. It's gone a long way as well. Has it gone too far? For me so far, aesthetics wise and feel wise, this and the Mizuno are pretty much head to head. Let's hit some more. Looking down at it, you just don't feel as though it's gonna give you that much help. It doesn't look that big, but it does give you the help. That golf swing was horrific. I think I pretty much missed the grooves on that one, and the numbers are still pretty decent. Let's hit a couple more and then have a big round up at the end. Oh, that makes up for the last one. What a strike that was. This is the last shot of the day, and I've got to tell you guys, it's been emotional. One thing that I've definitely come to conclusion on is why the heck am I still using bladed irons? I've put some, I'm not going to say terrible golf swings on these shots, but I've put some pretty poor ones on, and they've still performed, they've still felt pretty good, and it's still, I've still got a confidence in me in the next shot. If I hit a bad shot with my bladed iron, I'm sure you guys at home can tell me if you use blades, you're not that confident over the next one, are you? Let's see what we can do with this last shot. Let's finish on a special one. I'll probably go and shank it at the camera now or something. Oh yeah. Gone right, but what a strike that was. Okay guys, that is all the shots hit. I've hit six shots with each. 
let's take a look at the numbers for the Ping i500 iron. Okay guys, so looking at those numbers for the Ping i500, you can see there, even with the paw swinging at number four, we've still got pretty good numbers. Average carry, 160. Average total, 169.7. That's 0.2 of a yard difference than the P790. It's higher than the Titleist, and it's also four yards higher than the Mizuno average total distance. Spin rate 5500, that is pretty much exactly the same on all these clubs and that's exactly what I would expect. Let's take the cap off because it's starting to get a little bit itchy. You may notice from my videos I'm not really a cap guy. So I've had my different caps on, I've had my different thinking heads on and I've hit half a dozen shots with each. What is my conclusion? Realistically guys, I have to conclude these clubs are all very, very, very similar. And if you go and spend your hard earned cash on any of them, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. It's so easy nowadays to go and buy something off the rack, but again, as I say in most of my videos, if not all of them, go and try these clubs out. You wouldn't go and buy an expensive car without test driving it, so why would you go and buy expensive golf clubs without test driving them? Golf stuff is getting more expensive year after year. You probably notice as much as I do, so you need to make sure that you get your money's worth, be that in the experience when you buy them, be it in the product, be it in the experience when you're playing with them. One massive thing that I have to think about personally is which which club is going to make me want to go and practice? Which club is going to make me want to go and play more golf? For me, if I was to pick that between these ones, it would be... I, I don't think I can do it. I know I've got you on the edge of your seat there, but I don't think I can pick one. Definitely the i500 and the Mizuno JPX 919 Forged are up there. They both feel fantastic and that's the big thing for me. Apart from having terrible hat hair after this review, I leave this thinking... Ha I leave this thinking which one felt the best and it's definitely between these two we're splitting straws I guess the i500 went further and that's exactly what I saw when I went for the fitting the other week at ping with Ed the i500 just outperformed a lot of golf clubs comment below guys have you tried these i500s are they outperforming anything that you've tried guys I hope you've enjoyed that put the thumbs up if you have make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below comment below a question comment below anything I'm here doing these videos because I want to hear from you guys I I want to hear from the viewers, I want to hear from the subscribers. I've been James Robinson, I'm here at Huddersfield Golf Club and I'll see you soon.